and welcome to the Woodside Green Christian Centre Sunday service. We are meeting in the presence of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. He suffered that we might escape judgment. He gave all that we might win everything. He died that we might have eternal life. He is our vision, the Lord of our heart. Let's come to God in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we come to you, the God of all creation, to bring our offering of praise and worship. Though a holy and just God, you're also a loving and compassionate God who forgives us our sin because of the death of Jesus on the cross. We need not face the penalty for our sin, but instead are receiving the blessing of salvation and the promise of eternity in heaven. Be with us today, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing another new song, this time from Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God.
the heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour for speech, their silent voice calls out to the land. God sets in motion the sun in the heaven, a champion runner making his way, rising at one end and setting the other. The sun brings war to every day. turn to the programme for this week. The Sunday programme begins at 10 o'clock at Woodside Green for the Breaking of Bread, followed by a Bible talk at 11 o'clock. At 10.45 the YouTube service starts and that will join the main service, a live stream for the Bible talk at 11 o'clock. There's also Sparkles Young Explorers and SAS at Woodside Green 
from 10.55. On Tuesday is the Women's Fellowship at Woodside Green. On Wednesday, a Bible study and prayer time on Zoom. That's at 8 o'clock. On Thursday, the prayer update email will be sent out. Please send in your prayer requests. And on Friday, the Brothers' Prayer Meeting is on Zoom at 8 o'clock. Our psalm for our own private reading this week is Psalm 95, a great psalm of praise. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let's sing again. Good, good Father. stories of what they think you're like but I've heard a tender whisper of love in the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone you're a good Gareth to bring us God's word.
A welcome to you all online to Woodside Green Christian Centre and to the folks who are here now. We've been looking at Daniel and I was just thinking before I start started, have you ever worked for an employer who didn't know too much? He made mistakes. He was an arrogant so-and-so. And when it came to it, it didn't matter how bad the decision, he was going to show you who was boss. And he, he could be petulant. And I think something of that comes across in the chapter that we're reading now, Daniel chapter 5. King Belshazzar, read in chapter 5. We've been seeing previously about Nebuchadnezzar, but this may be his grandson. King Belshazzar gave a great banquet for a thousand of his nobles and drank wine with them. While Belshazzar was drinking his wine, he gave orders to bring in the gold and silver goblets that Nebuchadnezzar, his father, had taken uh, from the temple in Jerusalem, so that the king and his nobles, his wives and his concubines might drink from them. So they brought in the gold goblets that had been taken from the temple of God in Jerusalem. And the kings and his nobles, his wives and his concubines drank from them. As they drank the wine, they praised the gods of gold and silver, of bronze, iron, wood and stone. What an arrogant man this was. He'll show them. He probably knew at that very time that there were the forces of Persia outside the city. But he didn't make any difference. He's the boss. But suddenly, the fingers of a human hand appeared and wrote on the plaster of the wall near the lampstand in the royal palace. The king watched the hand as it wrote. His face turned pale. And he was so frightened that his knees knocked together and his legs gave way. He wasn't as grand as he made out to be. The king called out for the enchanters, astrologers and diviners to be brought and said to these wise men of Babylon, whoever reads this writing and tells me what it means will be clothed in purple and have a gold chain placed around his neck and he will be made the third highest ruler in the kingdom. Then all the king's wise men came in, but they could not read the writing or tell, tell the king what it meant. So King Belshazzar became even more terrified and his face grew more pale. His nobles were baffled. The queen, perhaps his wife, perhaps the queen mother, hearing the voices of the king and his nobles came into the banquet. Oh, o king, live forever, she said. Don't be alarmed. Don't look so pale, she had more sense than Belshazzar. There is a man in your kingdom who has the spirit of the holy gods in him. In the time of your father he was found to have insight and intelligence and wisdom like that of the gods. King Nebuchadnezzar, your father, your father the king, I say, appointed him chief of the magicians, enchanters, astrologers and diviners. This man, Daniel, whom the king called Belteshazzar, was found to have a keen mind and knowledge and understanding, and also the ability to interpret dreams, explain riddles, and solve difficult problems. Call for Daniel, and he will tell you what the writing means. 
So Daniel was brought before the king. And Daniel was probably in his 80s now, taken as a young man from Jerusalem, but the years have gone by. So he sent for, and he was brought in to the king, verse 13. Are you Daniel, one of the exiles my father the king brought from Judah? I have heard that the spirit of the gods is in you and that you have insight, intelligence and outstanding wisdom. The wise men and enchanters were brought before me to read this writing and tell me what it means, but they could not explain it. So I have heard that you are able to give interpretations and to solve difficult problems. If you can read this writing and tell me what it means, you would be clothed in purple and have a gold chain placed around your neck. How wonderful. And you will be made the third highest ruler in the kingdom. Then Daniel answered the king, You may keep your gifts for yourself and give your rewards to someone else. Nevertheless, I will read the writing for the king and tell him what it means. O king, the most high God gave your father Nebuchadnezzar sovereignty and greatness and glory and splendor. Because of the high position he gave him, all the peoples and nations and men in of every language dreaded and feared him. Those the king wanted to put to death, he put to death, so he wanted to spare, he spared. And those he wanted to promote, he promoted. And those he wanted to humble, he humbled. But when his heart became arrogant and hardened with pride, he was deposed from his royal throne and stripped of his glory. He was driven away from the people and given the mind of an animal. He lived with the wild donkeys and ate grass like cattle. And his body was drenched with the dew of heaven until he acknowledged that the Most High God is sovereign over the kingdoms of men and sets over them anyone he wishes. But you, his son, O Belshazzar, have not humbled yourself. Though you knew all this, instead you have set yourself up against the Lord of heaven. You had the goblets from his temple brought to you, and your nobles, your wives, and your concubines drank wine from them. You praised the gods of silver and gold, of bronze, iron, wood, and stone, which cannot see or hear or understand it, but you did not honour the God who holds in his hand your life and all your ways. Therefore he sent the hand that wrote the inscription. This is the inscription that was written. Mene, mene, tekel, parson. This is what the words mean. Mene, God has numbered the days of your reign and brought it to an end. Tekel, you have been weighed on the scales and found wanting. Peres, your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. And how is this for an action? Then at Belshazzar's command, Daniel was clothed in purple, a gold chain was placed around his neck, even though he'd said he didn't want them, and he was proclaimed the third highest ruler in the kingdom. Oh, Belshazzar, he was somebody. He could still say who was boss. Do you know, the great men down through history have not humbled themselves before God. And it concerns me in our own day. Are our leaders humbling themselves before God? Or do they think they have the brains to cope with everything that's happening now? God gave man brains. We have scientists. They're a gift. But do the scientists acknowledge the God? Some do. Many don't. God who is above all and who is sovereign. Men must humble themselves. Do you know the great Pharaoh was told, if I might just read it, 
Exodus chapter 10, verse 3. This is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews says. How long will you refuse to humble yourselves before me? Let my people go so that they may worship me. How long is it going to take before men acknowledge their failure and humble themselves before God? Even, I shouldn't say even, Christians, we're called on to humble ourselves before God. We know that we don't know it all, but we mustn't act as if we do. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6 says this. God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble humble yourselves therefore under God's mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you the God who many in our nation ignores is above all and he cares and he loves those he's created. God so loved the world, we've been thinking already, that he gave his son. So the leaders of this world and us all are asked to humble ourselves. Acknowledge God. He's, he's the king. He's the sovereign. And if he's given us a clever mind, well, thank him for it. But bow before God and acknowledge him. You know, Belshazzar was numbered. It meant his reign was going to come to an end. The years of his reign were finished. This arrogant man who thought he did something that his predecessors hadn't done, taking the uh, vessels of the temple as if scorning God and praising false gods. And he was numbered. And there's much in the scriptures about numbering. And it's not just old people. Psalm 90 would perhaps talk to old people uh, like me. <clears throat> The length of our days is 70 years, or 80 if we have the strength. Yet their span is but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. It goes on to say, Who knows the power of your anger, for your wrath is as great as the fear that is due to you. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. We are to number our days. We know that our life down here is finite. I've got a tract here, picked it up in Croydon. What time is it? Quarter past eleven. Well, it's time to seek the Lord. It's time to get right with him. And to uh, the scriptures say this, Behold, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. When that hand appeared, doing the writing on the wall with God's message, we're not told that there was any other part of the body seen. It was just a hand. But the writing was what was important what it said to Belshazzar. 
And you know, we're more privileged in one sense. How many words was many, many tekel you fasten? Four words. We have a Bible. And we may not have seen with our eyes God who calls this book to be written, but it's there. It's there for our encouragement. It's there for our understanding. And there is much that we may hear from it. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. This is what we can see. Belshazzar saw the writing on the wall. We see God's word. It's a lamp for our feet. The writing is there. It's God's word. And uh, let me just read that verse, Psalm 119. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. I have taken an oath and confirmed it that I will follow your righteous laws. The psalmist goes on, I have suffered much, preserved my life, O Lord, according to your word. Just those few words for Belshazzar, it baffled everyone present, all the people who thought they were so privileged, come into that great banquet, and Belshazzar himself, and what he, he saw terrified him. He didn't understand it, but he was terrified by it. Now I've talked about numbering our days in the 70 or 80, you, you see how many days has the Lord given us. But it isn't just for the old, it's for the young too. Remember your creator in the days of your youth. The time is now. Now is the accepted time. It's not something you put off a relationship with God, getting right with the Lord. It's for now because God cares He's more interested in you than anyone else that you know. And he wants you to walk in his way and to know the joy of your salvation. And let me just read what Solomon, the wise man, said in Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Remember your creator in the days of your youth before the days of trouble come and the years approach when you will say, I find no pleasure in them. And then it goes on about the grinders ceasing. Anyone know that? Your grinders ceased, have they? Uh, these things happen. Time goes on. Boast not yourself of tomorrow. And we don't know what's coming. Uh, Proverbs 27, verse 1. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what day a day may bring forth. Let another praise you and not your own mouth, someone else but not your own lips. And of course there is that story that the Lord told of that rich man who was foolishly thinking that wealth was down here on this earth Luke's gospel if I might find that the parable of the rich fool I'll read it to you Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? Then he said to them, Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possession. And he told them this parable. The, gr the ground of a certain rich man produced a good crop. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. There I will store all my grain and my goods. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of good things laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink and be merry. But God said to him, you fool. 
This very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? And this is what Belshazzar has been told this very night. Daniel in his 80s. The Lord had promised in Jeremiah that there would be captivity for his people for 70 years and uh, by the Babylonians, but it was going to come to an end. And when men set things up with no consideration about the Almighty, understand this, God is over control, in control and he will bring to an end the affairs of this world. We are concerned about climate change and there's something to be said. Again, best minds thinking, what should we do? But you know, keep things in perspective because one day God is going to judge this earth and this earth will be burnt. Peter shows, tells us that. God's judgment. It's appointed unto man once to die and after that, the judgments. It applies to everyone, not just Belshazzar. His judgment came that night. But you remember when uh, Paul was in Athens, he, he was preaching. Sorry. Acts chapter 17. And you remember the story of they had a, an altar with an inscription to an unknown God. And Paul was to preach this God. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything because he himself gives all men life and breath and everything else. And he goes on to say, In the past, God overlooked ig such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of all this to all men by raising him from the dead. And that, of course, is the Lord Jesus. What's our relationship to God? In the giving of his Son, he showed his love, God did, to this world. A world where people are arrogant and proud and throw their fists up to the Lord and, and as if they've got power. <laughs> it's laughable. He that sits in the heavens shall laugh. Men laughed and they haven't got anything to laugh about. God laughs because he sees the stupidity of men who reject him and ignore him. May that not be true of any of us. May we be considering the time, redeeming the time in God's service and plan. Are we seeking his will for our lives? I'm going to read this poem from this tract about the time it is. The clock of life is wound but once, and no man has the power to tell just where the hands will stop at late or early hour. To lose one's wealth is sad indeed. To lose one's health is more. To lose one's soul is such a loss as no man can restore. The present only is our own, to seek to do God's will. Tomorrow holds no promises, for the clock may then be still. Today we seek to serve the Lord. Let's pray, shall we? 
Our God and Father, we have read a chapter, a dramatic chapter, where this man who was so arrogant and yet so ignorant that he did and said foolish things and ignored you, O God, found that you, O God, are above him, just as above his grandfather Nebuchadnezzar, father, when he was arrogant and proud, he was brought low too. But he acknowledged you at the end. But Father, help us in our lives, we who have declared our faith in the Lord Jesus, knowing that he alone dealt with our sins, we could not do so ourselves. But help us, Father, to live in the light of these verses, reminding ourselves to redeem the time, to make use of that which you have given us, for we do not know what tomorrow may bring. Father, we do pray for tomorrow. We pray for this coming week that we will be found in your will, doing what is right. There are things, Father, that comes our way, things that we shouldn't put first, but they're there in our minds. Father, help us to put you first, to love you with all our heart, soul, strength and mind. Father, and to love our Saviour and to walk the way he wants us. He's the way, the truth and the life. Father, may we know him as our way, our truth and our life. Father, we cannot live this Christian life on our own. We need your Holy Spirit day by day. Help us to seek you and find you, for that is your promise, O God, that those who seek you will find you. So, Father, help us to learn from these men of history who thought themselves so great, so much power, and yet they had nothing, Father, when you brought them to judgment. So bless us, it we ask, in this coming week. In Jesus' name, Amen. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free. Oh, is free indeed. I am a child of God. Yes, I am. Free at last, he has ransomed me. His grace runs deep While I was a slave to sin Jesus died for me Yes, he died for me Who the sun sets free Oh, is free indeed I'm a child of God Yes, son Child.
Yes, I am. 